What a goal. That Kobe Mane goal is probably one of the best goals I've seen all season. The nutmeg, the cut in and then the curl in the bottom corner. In the last minute, by an 18-year-old, that's amazing. I almost screamed at the top of my lungs at 4 a.m. Watching that match, seeing that late winner made it worth it to stay up at 4 a.m. and watch that whole match. This match had everything in it. Peak football entertainment from early goals, goal line clearances, penalty, United choking a two-goal lead, Wolves getting a late equaliser and then the 18-year-old academy graduate scoring a late, late goal. Let me give you some really cool facts about this game. Three of the four goals scored were by academy graduates. The last four winning goals scored by an 18-year-old in the Premier League have all four been for Manchester United. They were Makeda, Rashford, Garnacho and now Meno. Hoyland is the youngest United player to have a goal and an assist in back-to-back games. The other player is Cristiano Ronaldo. This is the first goal Hoyland has in the Premier League which has, which has been assisted by his teammate. All of his other goals, he has scored on his own. And now, the more depressing fact is that United are only the second Premier League team who have conceded 50 goals in all competitions. The only other team is Sheffield United. Probably for the first time in the end the season, we actually had a game plan. We actually were playing with a play style. We showed that United can actually play football and not just survival football. We had patterns of play, we were pressing, we were defending well. We were even had chances from set pieces which United never does usually. United actually controlled the game and this proves that Ten Hag is actually not a bad manager. He just didn't have his players with him. For the first like 60 minutes, we were actually in control. We were dominating. We were creating chances. We should have been 3 or 4 nil up. We had two offside goals. Bruno missed so many chances. Holland missed chances. There was no need for the game to be so traumatic actually. Because we all know, you and me both know, that as soon as United concedes a goal, there is gonna be an element of choking. And that came to be true. The thing about this game was, Pedro's penalty was not a penalty, it was a dive. Casemiro lightly touched him on his chin. I agree, there's contact, but not every contact leads to a penalty. Because just last night, in the Liverpool Chelsea match, we saw Van Dijk doing two fouls. One was on Gat Gallagher, and the other was on Nkunku, and both were not given as a penalty. So it's just against United that these fouls seem to be given out. And that penalty was the turning point for United choking the game almost. This is what you get for not scoring your chances and getting a comfortable win. As soon as it went 2-1, I think 90% of the fans knew that we might choke it. I am really happy for Rashford getting his goal. Because let me be honest, I was not happy with the punishment given out. I think he should have been suspended for more games. But at this point of the season, when United was sitting 8th or 9th, and Ten Hag was in danger of losing his job, I don't think he was ever going to get suspended. So Rashford did what Rashford should do in this match. He scored with the first touch. He didn't take any unnecessary touches for the goal. And then throughout the match, he was actually passing, tracking back and crossing, which is... Unlike Rashford, so I'm happy that he's doing that. But I hope it's not just for one game and he keeps doing it consistently. Even Hoyland scored a really good goal. Hoyland has been consistently making those kinds of near post runs, right? But he never gets a pass. One time he gets that pass from Shaw and he scores that goal. He was also really close to score another goal when Ganacho passed, like, cut it back to him. Hoyland controlled it and shot. Sa made a really good save, but Hoyland can score in these chances if our wingers stop being so selfish and actually pass to him. If you have liked my video so far, then I would really appreciate if you can click on the like button. It really helps me out. McTominay actually suits that role, that super sub role. I have always been seeing that Casemiro and Menu make a good partnership. It's not even just about those two. The thing is, if we have a 6 like Casemiro and Abramat, they need a number 8 who's actually a box-to-box, -box, like a proper box-to-box. -box. Eriksen is not a box-to-box. -box. Mount may be a box-to-box, -box, but he's always injured. McTominay is not a box-to-box. -box. McTominay is a better attacker than a defender. 
And now in this game, when we saw Menu, who's actually a box to box, who can defend and attack, along with the Casemiro, who's a sixth defensor, we saw how well they can control the game. So the role of McTominay comes in the last 20 30 minutes when we need a goal or when we need to defend from set pieces or something. McTominay is not a starter. He's a really good super sub and he showed it again in this game that if you play him as a super sub, he will give you a lot more quality and there will be a lot less pressure on him individually. The one thing in this match which I didn't like is that Ten Hag made two controversial calls playing Rashford and Onana in the starting eleven. The Rashford call worked out, he scored a goal. The Onana call didn't really work out. Because, let's be honest, I think out of the three goals he conceded, the second goal, which was from that corner one, Onana could have done better. The other two goals he wasn't at fault. My issue with Onana is, he once again punched the goals clear. Like, are you kidding me? He didn't learn from the starting of the season and he again punched a Wolves player and Licha had to make a goal line clearance. If Licha wasn't there, if Martinez doesn't save that, that's a goal because of on- Onana mistake. I think Bayendir could have done a better job in the goal. I I don't think he saves other two goals, but still just having that calm presence might have prevented goal leading situations. And he added once again showed their casual weakness, conceding from a counter-attack from our own set piece, then conceding a goal from another corner. Our set-piece coach, Eric Ramsey, is actually useless. We barely ever score a goal from a corner or a set-piece, but we concede a ton from them. Manchester United can play good football. The biggest question about this team is, yes, we got a good win, a morale-boosting win. It shouldn't have been this close. We almost choked it. But the biggest question is, can Manchester United stay consistent? Can they get 4 or 5 wins in a row because our next two games are really difficult West Ham who are already above us and away to Aston Villa Aston Villa who have the best home record in the league so if we can prove that we can win those two games and play good football then I really think we have a good chance of getting a European spot because Spurs might choke and Aston Villa and West I, I don't know West Ham but Aston Villa have been bad away from home so there's a chance we can still get at least a European spot, if not even Champions League. But we need to be consistent. And for that consistency, we need a starting eleven, Because we saw how much our team improved with Martinez in the team, who made the most passes out of everyone. Casemiro, who had the most tackles and interceptions out of anyone from the United side. Shaw, monumental for the goals. So we can play good football, but we need our main players if they get injured because Licha was subbed off and he got iced on his foot. I hope it's not a recurrence or relapse of his injury. I really hope this United side can keep consistent and keep playing good football because even though I, I really enjoyed this match, I do not want such close calls match again and again. We need to win comfortably and control matches. For the web, for the West Ham game, I think it's got, again going to be a really close game because this time are actually playing really good. And the only thing is we are playing at home. So, I'm going to say United you know, wins that game 2-1. That's my prediction for it. And if you think that the Newport game that we won 4-2 was also embarrassing as well, then check out this video here where I tell my opinion about it and why it was an actually embarrassing result. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.